Black eyed people, sometimes called black eyed children, are back, are young people, often children, with eyes that are solid black, with no differentiation between scarlia, pupil, or iris, and are occasionally reported to have blue or blues tinted skin, like that of a corpse. Those who report encounters with them often feel that the children were somehow supernatural and extremely dangerous though they could not explain why. Often, they can be seen playing games and singing the nursery songs, Old Man Long Legs, or He Jumped Into a Bramble Bush. They're usually near abandoned or deserted areas. Sometimes, the reports talk of them appearing at one's doorstep, usually alone or in a pair. They appear to be unusually confident, yet shy children who avoid your gaze and look down hiding their eyes, but speaking with an eloquency far beyond their apparent age. Often using the mannerisms and speech patterns of an adult, they occasionally even possess the voice of an adult too. They will usually attempt to talk to the victim into allowing them entry into their home to use a telephone or to be safe from some unspecified danger. Occasionally, when seen outside the home, they will immediately stop their play and stare at you or, if possible, approach you, asking for a place to stay or trying to talk you into giving them a ride home. Often people begin to agree to their request against their better judgement, even though the request will seem vaguely unsettling without realising why it is. Should you discover that their eyes are completely black, the children become very angry and insistent on you complying with their demands. Some people who have encountered Beck feel that the children may have been using some form of low-level mind control to get them to comply. Experiences involved with Beck generally do not explain the cause of the children's eye colour or the origins of the children themselves. Sometimes thought to be the spirits of lost or murdered children, the Beck are thought to be the harbingers of ill will and personal doom. The encounters frequently emphasise that the children must be voluntarily admitted or invited into the house or car in question, and in this way are reminiscent of some vampire legends. However, it is unspecified what happens should you comply with their demands, as no reports of the Beck have included that happening, possibly indicating the death of those that comply. It was warm for a December afternoon in Hutchinson, Can, when Katie came home from work in 2008. Katie's ride dropped her off across from her duplex, and as she stood in the street, her ride moving slowly away, she knew something wasn't right. I noticed two boys standing in my driveway, she said. One had longer dark hair, and the other had his hood up so I couldn't see him very well. The teenagers, about 15 or 16 years old, seemed to be watching her. Kitty felt they were waiting for her. She steeled herself and walked nervously across the road towards her porch. The boys had lurked around her neighbourhood for months, but they'd never been so bold as to stand this close to her home. I had seen them before, lingering in the yard, but they always left before I got out of my ride's car, Kitty said. I had seen them late at night, as well standing across the street, when I would go outside to have an occasional late night cigarette. But although pangs of unease told her to run, their boldness angered her. She stopped and asked them why they were on her property. They told me they needed to use a phone and that the neighbours would not let them in, she said. That was when I noticed their eyes. They were coal black, just black. No white and not even a hint of iris or pupil. Fear shot through her, but as evenly as she could, Kitty told them she didn't have a telephone. Kitty walked up her porch steps and began to unlock her door when the boy in the hood spoke. He asked if they had come in for a glass of water, she said. I turned to look at them again, thinking maybe my mind was playing tricks. But no, when I turned and looked into their eyes, They were pitch black as the first time. 
These children, with dead, black eyes had spoken softly to her, emotion and vocal inflection absent from their words. As she looked at these boys, whose long hair and hooded sweatshirts she felt hid more than skin, she knew she had to get away. I felt panic and fearful, but also very vulnerable and cold, she said. It was like I wanted to let them in, but I knew there was evil present. I had felt uneasy before seeing their eyes, but now it all came out. Then one boy said something that turned her fear into complete terror. The hooded one then told me they couldn't come in unless I told them it was okay, and that they hoped I would because they were thirsty, Katie said. I opened my door and darted inside. At this point, I shut the door and locked it. She dropped onto the couch, her breaths coming in short, heavy gasps, when something tapped on the window behind her head. One of the boys stood there staring through the glass, Katie said. I remember his words very clearly. Just let us in, miss. We aren't dangerous. We don't have anything to hurt you with. I was beyond frightened at this point. Katie jumped off the couch and ran through the duplex, checking doors and windows to make sure they were locked. I did wonder if they really couldn't come in unless invited, but I didn't want to find out, she said. I sat in the living room silently, waiting for a sign that they had gone. When her boyfriend came home a short time later, black-eyed teens were still at the house. He asked if I knew who the two boys outside were, and I said no. Katie said. He told me they had been standing in the driveway when he pulled up but walked away when he stepped out of the car. He didn't notice the boy's eyes but they gave him a strange feeling. Katie later asked her neighbours if the black eyed children had asked to use their telephone like they had claimed. The neighbours noticed the teen standing in Katie's driveway but never spoke with them. Although it's been more than a year since Katie turned the black eyed children from her door she knows they're still around. I still see them every now and then, standing across the street, watching, she said. But they have not approached me again. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment below. All feedback, good or otherwise, is always appreciated. If you have any creepy stories of your own, or have any topics that you would like me to cover, feel free to send them in via any of my social media. You can find all links to my social media in the description below. Until next time guys, make sure you lock your doors, stay safe. And I'll see you next video.